the mantle was kind of the baton of Lovecraft was being passed on to me and hearing that like that was what Stuart wanted I mean it's an honor you know it's an absolute honor and I felt like you know while still you know getting a couple Joe Lynch things in there the best thing that we could have done was do something that could make him proud and so proud that the ambulances are coming right now Tell us a little bit about what we can expect from from the film. What you can expect from a suitable flesh. Well, you can uh, definitely expect uh, flesh, lots of it. Um, but you can also expect uh, a little bit of body horror, a little bit of body swapping, a little bit of cosmic horror, a little bit of Lovecraft, a lot of love. Uh, Thank you so much. Just everything that you would want in a horror film that you don't get a lot of these days. You know, so it's something that we're very proud that we we're able to kind of give to the, an audience that I feel is thirsty for this sort of um, cinema with an S, if you will. With an edge. Yes. <laughs> I mean, gone are the days of, sadly, of, of movies that are trying to push buttons but also entertain. And that was something that we were very, very aware of from the beginning. And uh, to take something like Lovecraft and do what um, Stuart Gordon, who's one of my heroes, who we dedicate the movie to tonight, um, give back to our kind of cinema provocateurs like Stuart and um, Brian De Palma and Paul Verhoeven and Claire Denis, you know, these filmmakers who know how to entertain, but also, you know, be a little dangerous. So hopefully we got a little dangerous with everybody tonight. So this, this script has its, its origins, uh, you know, many, many years ago, and it was going to be a Stuart Gordon project yeah. at some point. Could you talk a little bit about um, paying tribute to him while still being a, a, a Joe Lynch film. There was a lot of internal struggle. Uh, there was a lot of uh, like Dark Nights of the Heart. Uh, no, honestly. Um, look, Stuart is one of my heroes, was one of my heroes, still is one of my heroes. And to know that you know, the, the mantle was kind of the baton of Lovecraft was being passed on to me and hearing that like that was what Stuart wanted. I mean, it's an honor. You know, it was an absolute honor. And I felt like, you know, while still, you know, getting a couple of Joe Lynch things in there, the best thing that we could have done was do something that could make him proud. And so proud that the ambulances are coming right now. Yeah. That, like, watch out. It's getting, it's getting testy over here. All because of Stuart Gordon. Sure. Well, last question. You've done so many uh, films um, in such a short amount of time. Uh, then there's so many that are, are beloved. Can you talk about, is, is there anything that um, that you are particularly proud of that you wish more people had seen that you'd like to kind of shout out for the Screen Rand viewer? Um, oh God, wow, thank you. Um, well, you won't hear me talk anything about Knights of Bad Astem yet. Uh, we're getting there. Someday, someday the director's cut will come to fruition. Um, to be honest, I mean, I look, making movies is a miracle. And the fact that anybody has seen my work, let alone just, not just my mom, who's here tonight, which is crazy, um, is like a dream come true. Um, you know, and, but, but it is also weird to have a random person be like, dude, wrong turn two, that movie fucking rocks. It's like, what? You've seen that, David Fincher? That's crazy. You know, that's not true, but it should be. Um, but to be honest, uh, like one movie that I'm particularly proud of that's starting to, um, I guess, uh, attain the kind of, cult status if you will it sounds so pompous but um because when it first came out like it just seemed like it it came out at the wrong time and so many of the movies that we love came out at the wrong time you know and and it's the movies that endure it's a Salma Hayek movie that I did called Everly uh which is all set in one room and you know I've had people come up to me like lately and go it's, like, it's my favorite Christmas movie and I'm like oh shucks you know it's like that's that's a, a very heartfelt thing to hear that you get to have films that endure you know it, it, when we were growing up, it was all about that box office weekend, you know, and then does a movie live or die by that box office weekend. But the true movies that endure are the movies that 10 years from now we're still talking about, you know, all those favorite films that we all go like, oh, my God, but have you seen Dirty Mary, Crazy Larry, you know, or The Exterminator 2, you know, not many people do talk about that. So but Dirty when you Mary, Crazy Larry. I haven't seen The Exterminator 2. Oh, uh, see, we're talking about it. Who would have thought Jim Glickenhaus, you know, 30 years ago was going like someday some schmo on a red carpet at Tribeca Film Festival is going to talk about Exterminator 2. <laughs> but that's that to me is the seal of quality is that you can have films that can endure. And hopefully, you know, whether or not this movie resonates tonight or in 20 years, we're just lucky to be making these movies. And we're, we're, I'm so proud of this film.